It's a great pleasure for me, really, to see this gathering in this room, which is the main lecture hall of the Faculty of Physics of the University of Warsaw. This building was built specially for the, the physics department in 1930. And ever since, all generations of Polish physicists, they almost entirely took their lectures and uh, education in physics in this hall, including myself, of course. So this hall is associated with best lectures that we get, as well as the toughest exams that we sit in this, le in this lecture hall. So although in those days buildings were not built to be uh, ready for uh, large-scale modern conferences, but I thought this would be the most appropriate place for a his historical meeting of the kind that we have. And the historical meeting, as you know, is really focused on the book that has just appeared, uh, just been published by Cambridge University Press, which contains 12 chapters on historical figures in turbulence research, written by most outstanding, currently active researchers in that field. And the, the best, really, uh, it would be, uh, instead of inventing my own recommendation of that book, I think I'll just read a few paragraphs from the preface to this book. So, in this book, we, i.e. the editors and the contributors, we propose to explore the development of ideas in turbulence over the 100-year period, 1880 through 1980. We describe this as a voyage through turbulence rather than history, because we make no claims to the completeness that a history would demand. Rather, we invite the reader to join this voyage in the company of a group of 12 great scientists who contribute to the development of the subject over this period, during which its intense challenge and difficulty came to be increasingly appreciated. The problem of turbulence has challenged mathematicians, physicists, and engineers alike and our choice of voyagers reflects this span of disciplines. And now come the names of the, the 12 heroes of the 12 chapters of that book. Osborne Reynolds, scientist and engineer. Ludwig Prantl, aerodynamicist and engineer. Theodor von Karman, aerodynamicist and engineer. Jeffrey Ingram Taylor, physicist, applied mathematician and engineer. Louis Fry Richardson, meteorologist and mathematician. Andrei Nikolaevich Kolmogorov, mathematician and statistician. Stanley Corsin, fluid dynamicist. George Keith Batchelor, fluid dynamicist. Alan Townsend, physicist and fluid dynamicist. Robert Craigman, mathematical physicist. Satish Dhawan, aerodynamicist and engineer. Philip Safman, mathematician and fluid dynamicist. Now, another, another um, paragraph that explains, um, I think, uh, very much while we're here. Why it may be, why it may be asked should the problem of turbulence exert such enduring fascination within the scientific community? First, perhaps because it is recognized as a prototype of problems in the physical sciences exhibiting both strong nonlinearity and irreversibility, a combination of circumstances that leads to great irregularity in both space and time of the fields considered. This is also why its resolution has eluded the best minds of the 20th century. 
And there are um, quotations of the, of the um, famous sentences that we all know in, in some form. The remark that turbulence is the most important unsolved problem of classical physics, attributed to Nobel laureate Richard Feynman, and perhaps originating with Einstein, remains true to this day. Horace Lamb, author of the great classic treatise Hydrodynamics, is alleged to have said, when I meet my creator, one of the th first things I shall ask of him is to reveal to me the solution to the problem of turbulence, or words to that effect. So, the first proposition was that turbulence is why it's so important and so fascinating is that it's recognized as a prototype of problems. And the second is the great span of applications of fluid mechanics that has generated an overgrowing need to achieve a better fundamental understanding of the origins and effects of turbulence in practical circumstances. This need was first fueled by the rapid development of aerodynamics in the early part of the 20th century. And this will presumably be mentioned by other speakers or chairmen, but um, it's perhaps appropriate to say at this point that the original idea of this book arose during the program on the nature of Heinrich Reynolds number turbulence held at the Isaac Newton Institute for Mathematical Sciences in 2008. And as many of you, maybe most of you, attended the European Turbulence Conference the last four days here, I thought that on the occasion of the 70th birthday of Kolmogorov, uh, 70th birthday of Kolmogorov's K41 theory, and the occasion of the 25th anniversary of ETC, it would be very appropriate to have this extension, historical extension, as I think this subject is particularly important for this subject, the, the historical continuity and for us to realize what's been done and by whom. So I welcome you to this day and a half historical meeting.